Hello, my name's James Patterson, and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna go through a whole host of tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make the most of Photoshop and speed up your image editing. We're gonna use a landscape and a portrait image here to rifle through lots of different things. We're gonna start by talking about the workspace, and you can access panels and then position them wherever you like to customize your workspace. Let's go to window, and this gives me the list of all the panels. We'll choose the layers panel, as this is uh, when you're gonna be wanna want to be using very often we can dock the layers panel over here to the side of the screen and let, let's just go ahead and open up one more we'll choose adjustments and we can drag the adjustments panel to the bottom here so you can see I can have panels positioned like this I can also include other panels by dragging them to this space here to sit them behind my layers and customize it exactly how I want with my most commonly used panels. You can then go to Window Workspace and you can go to New Workspace and then save your workspace and then that way it's always there for you, you can go back to it where, whenever you need. And another useful feature for arranging your workspace is to sort out the documents which you can do so using the Arrange Documents tab I just click on this and let's just choose this option here. So this gives me different ways to view all of my open documents and it's context sensitive. So it's based on how many documents you have open at one time. So if you have millions of documents open, you can view them all in a grid if you like. Let's just click back on the first option here. And um, my next top tip is to dodge and burn non-destructively. You can do this by creating a new layer in the layers panel. And then let's go to edit fill and we'll choose 50% grey, let's hit OK to apply that. Then we'll change the blending mode of this grey layer to overlay. Then we can use the burn tool over here in the tools panel and paint over the sky to burn it in. Let's just undo that because I'm going to show you another top tip to change the size of your brush. So if I hold Alt and then right click, if I hold the right click on the mouse and drag to the right, I can resize my brush. Left makes it smaller, drag to the right makes it larger. I can also change the hardness of the brush by dragging it up or down. So you can see if I drag down, that will make the brush harder. If I drag up, you can see it's given me a softer transition. So this is a really quick way to change the size and the hardness of your brush. And then I'm just gonna whiz over the sky here with my burn tool to burn that in. Let's do the same with the reflection down here. Let's flick to the dodge tool. And with mid-tones, let's bring the exposure down slightly. Just dodge the mid-tone slightly. And you can see how that's working on my uh, overlay gray layer here. The next top tip is to use the brush tool to paint in tone. So let's just first go ahead and duplicate our background there by pressing Command and Control and J. Then let's grab the brush tool over here in the tools panel. Let's choose a nice brown color. Let's hit OK to apply that. And we need to change the blend mode of our brush. So you can do this using another top tip, which, to which is to hold Shift and Alt. And then we want the soft light blend mode. So we're going to press F while holding Shift and Alt to change the blend mode up here to soft light. There's a whole host of different shortcuts for the other blend modes. So Shift and Alt, O for overlay, H for hard light, and so on and so forth with all the other uh, different blend modes. We'll keep it at soft light for now. And then if I paint with brown, with soft light blending mode, you can see I can change the tones in the image selectively very quickly. Next on the list of top tips, I'm gonna add a vignette to this uh, scene. So let's go ahead and add a new layer by clicking on the Create Layer icon here in the Layers panel. We're gonna use the Gradient tool to apply this vignette. And um, we want to reset our colors so we have black and white, so let's hit D to do so. Uh, we want white as our foreground color, black as our background, so let's flip them over. Then let's select the Radial Gradient option here, which is the second option, and we can simply just click and drag from the center outwards. And you can see this gives me a radial gradient, white to black. And then we need to simply change the blend mode up here. We can choose soft light. And let's flick that on or off. You can see how that's working just to darken the outer areas and draw attention to the castle in the middle. Now I'd like to merge all of these layers into one, but still keep them all intact beneath. So we can do this by clicking on the top layer in our stack. Let's 
click on the create new layer icon here in the layers panel to give us an empty layer. And then if we simply hold command and control, shift, alt and E, that will merge all of those layers together into one fully editable layer on its own. And I think this whole scene could do a little bit more contrast. So we can do that using an adjustment layer, but rather than having to go into the individual adjustments, we can just click on the presets down here to drop these open. So let's click on the levels presets and we'll just go for increase contrast too. And you can see how that's working. Let's press Command or Control and E just to merge that into our top layer. And you can see now I have lots of different layers sitting on top of each other. Occasionally you may have trouble locating a certain layer. There's an easy way around this. If you just right click while you have the move tool selected, let's right click over a certain point in the image. And this will give me a list of all the layers that are currently sitting over that point. And I can select a layer. So let's just choose background copy. And you can see in my layers panel, it flips to the background copy and I can work on that layer. Let's click back on my top layer. Now, if we wanted to apply a filter to this layer, we could simply go to filter and make our choice. But if we go to filter and convert for smart filters, this gives us more control over the filter. Let's hit OK to apply that. Now, if we go to filter and let's choose a filter, let's go for, if we go for texture, let's go to the texturizer. And if we want a canvas texture, Let's just make it a little bit stronger. Let's hit OK to apply that. And you can see in my layers panel, I have my texture as a separate smart filter that I can turn on or off. And if I double click on the texturizer uh, words there, I can go back into the texturizer dialog box and readjust the settings to get them looking how I want. And then if we're happy with our smart filter and you do want to apply it, you can just right click on the layer and go to rasterize layer and that will apply that filter. So now I think we're finished with our castle. We just need to sharpen it and we can do this using another top tip for high pass sharpening. Let's duplicate the layer first by pressing command and control and J and then let's go to filter and if we go to other and high pass and we'll keep the radius somewhere about 1.8 let's hit OK to apply that and we simply need to change the blend mode and to do this we can click on the drop down here or we can simply use the same shortcuts we used earlier which is shift and alt if you hold those and then if you hit O you can see that changes the blend mode to overlay and one other final thing we can do is to check the horizon is straight. You can do this by going to view and let's go to show grid. And this gives us a view of the grid. You can see along the line here that our horizon here is fairly straight. So we don't need to worry about it. If you did need to rotate the image, you could do so using the crop tool, just simply crop and then use the tilt options to rotate the crop. Let's just go to view show grid to turn that off. And now let's flip to our portrait image for a few more great tips. And the first tip with this portrait is to use a gradient map to get really even skin tone. So let's zoom into the face here. And if we click on the add adjustment error icon, let's choose gradient map. And then first of all, let's just bring the opacity of our gradient map down to zero. And then if we click off of the layer mask onto the actual gradient map section of the layer there. Then click within the gradient map gradient in the adjustments panel. This will open up the gradient editor where, where we can uh, select different colors to make our gradient from. So if we choose the white color, then we'll choose a light color in the skin, somewhere around the lightest tones. Maybe if we move over the arm here, you can see we have lighter tones in the hand then if we click to add a midpoint just somewhere in the middle of our gradient here and then let's choose a midtone somewhere around here looks good then let's click in the shadows and we'll choose a shadow area somewhere in the darkness under the chin here looks good let's hit ok to apply that now we need to change the blend mode of this gradient map adjustment layer to color. Then if we bring the opacity back up, you can see how that's 
adjusting the tones to give us a, an even skin color. Obviously it's affecting parts of the image where we don't want it to work such as the hat and the hair and everything but the skin. So if we click back on the layer mask, press Command or Control and I to invert the mask and fill it with black. Then we can grab the brush tool with white stuff foreground color, which is a nice soft circular brush. And then we need only paint over the areas of skin to reveal our gradient map here and give us a nice even skin tone. So you can see how that's working. Let's do the same over the arm here. And if I flick that gradient map on or off, you can see the effect is quite subtle, but it's giving us a really nice skin tone there. Next, I'm gonna show you a top tip on how to blur skin using a high pass filter. So first of all, let's just press Command and Control and E to merge our gradient map and give us one background layer. Let's press Command and Control and J to duplicate it. Then let's go to Filter, Other, High Pass. Let's bring the radius up to about 10. Somewhere around there is fine. Let's hit OK to apply that. And now we need to invert this. So we can do so by pressing and holding Command or Control and hitting I. And that will invert that top layer. Then we need to change the blend mode of this top layer to overlay, which we can do if you remember by holding Shift Alt and pressing O. Let's just make sure that we're not using our brush tool, otherwise we're gonna change the blend mode of our brush, so we'll set that back to normal. And then let's click on the Move tool, Shift Alt and O. This time we'll change the blend mode of the layer to overlay. And now we need to again use a layer mask to mask the blur in everywhere but the skin. So let's hold Alt and click the Add Layer Mask icon to give us a full layer mask. Let's grab the brush tool with white as our foreground color again and simply paint over the areas of skin. You can see this giving us a nice blur which we can control by reducing the opacity of that layer here in the layers panel. Let's flick it on or off and you can see how that's working to blur the skin nicely. The next top tip is to change eye color and we're gonna do this using quick mask mode. So if we hit Q, this will enter quick mask mode. We can then paint over the iris here in the eye and you can see this gives me a red color that, which is telling me the areas that are going to be selected. Now, if we hit Q again, we'll exit quick mask mode and that gives me my marching ant selection. Let's click on my background layer here, then let's click on the add adjustment layer icon and we'll choose hue saturation. And this gives me an adjustment layer and you can see it's given me a mask here where if you could see very closely, there are two dots where the eyes are. We just need to invert this mask again so everything is hidden apart from those irises. So if we hit command or control and I, that will invert the mask and then we can use the hue saturation sliders to change the color in the eyeball. Let's move in a little bit closer. And you can see how I can change, give her a nice blue eye there. Let's bump the saturation and the lightness up a touch. And obviously as this is on an adjustment layer, it can be toned down or changed whenever you like. Another great tip when working with masks is to use the masks panel, which you can find in window masks. And here you have lots of options to adjust your mask. You can change the density. You can also click on Mask Edge, and this will give you some very powerful options that are very similar to the Refine Edge options that you have available with selections. Let's just cancel that. And next I'm gonna show you how to quickly get a spot color effect. So let's just close my masks panel. First of all, we're gonna make the image into a nice black and white image. So we can do that using an adjustment layer. Let's choose black and white. And with the black and white adjustment options, you can really fine tune the conversion to get each tone the exact shade that you want it to be. And you can also click on this hand icon here. And if we click and drag within the image, you can interactively adjust certain tones. So once we've got it how we're looking how we want it to, we can then click on the layer mask and use the brush tool with black as our foreground color, opacity 100%. Let's zoom into the hat here. And then let's just use the brackets to give us a larger brush. We simply have to paint over the hat with our 
brush tool with black sasa foreground color and you can see on my layer mask thumbnail to the right of the screen how that's masking out the black and white adjustment there in these areas to give us a nice red hat just like this and of course as this is on a separate layer we can always reduce the opacity if we want to bring back a little bit of color let's bring it down to about 50 percent Next, let's look at adding a light trail. So to do this is a very simple tip. We can just uh, click on the pen tool here in the uh, tools panel. And then if we just click a few times, click and drag, we can build up this nice curved shape, just like this. And then if we grab our brush tool, let's just make sure we have white as our foreground color. Let's just create a new layer at the top of our stack to apply this to. And we want our brush size to be fairly small, somewhere around 30 works well for me, but obviously this will depend on the size of your image. And then let's click back on the pen tool. Then if we right click and we can go to stroke path. We want to make sure we have simulate pressure checked and the tool we are going to be using is the brush tool. Let's hit OK to apply that. And you can see that hasn't worked quite as I want it to. Let's hit Command or Control Alt and Z to undo that. Let's go back to my brush tool and let's check this option here for tablet pressure controls brush size. And then if I grab my pen tool again, let's right click and try again. We'll go to stroke path, simulate pressure. And you can see that's given me the effect I'm after, which is a nice tapered line. We can then, uh, let's first of all just go to paths and let's just click off our work paths so we're not using it. And then we can see our tapered line more easily. We then need to add a glow to this line. We can do so by clicking the FX icon here in the layers panel. Let's choose outer glow and then let's choose a nice color. We'll go for a nice vibrant electric blue color. Let's hit OK to apply that. Let's change the blend mode here to vivid light. And then we can change the size to make our streak more blue or less blue. So somewhere around there I think looks good. Let's hit OK to apply that. And you can see I now have a really quick and simple streak of light running through the image. Okay, so that's it for my list of top tips and techniques. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much.